God, God changed them. This isn't about us changing ourselves and trying harder, and I'm going to try harder. The scene they witnessed in the stable forever changed their lives. They found Christ, and when you find Christ, you're never the same. What happened was that in a moment, everything they'd ever heard about Scripture became personal. Remember, if you were at the Christmas concert the night I said this, I say something different every time, but I told one group that most people miss heaven by 18 inches. They know about it, Christ, but they haven't really experienced him, you know, between heart and head. It went from their head to their heart. They experienced Christ. It's the most overwhelming thing. I wonder this new year, have you experienced the Lord, the promises and the prophecies? Are they real? Has God changed you? Only God can change us. Self-change isn't what he's looking for. Divine change. Number two, God, when he changes us, becomes real. That's how you know he changed you. God became real to them. All those endless sacrifices, all those countless lambs, all the myriads of offerings and countless sins, and all those promises of forgiveness, all of a sudden were personal. It clicked. He gave himself for me. Not for them. For me. See, that's they embraced Christ. The, the sheep that were so ordinary that they watched in the fields and sold became extraordinary pictures of God's mercy and grace. The temple they supplied became the place where sacrifices for their sins were offered. And all those mysterious rites and ceremonies made sense because they found the Lamb of God. I wonder this new year, has God ever become personal, real, and near to you? Have you experienced him? Not heard about it. But embraced it. Thirdly, God started them down a new path. Up until that night of nights, their lives as shepherds were monotonous, predictable. They were used to sheep, they very little in their habits. They walked so often down the same path, it becomes a rutted canyon. But just like the rest of the New Testament recorded, those shepherds went back to that same old monotonous job as different people. See, what changes our world is not our world changing. Most of us, if we're not content with what we have, we'll never be content with what we want. It's learning to go back to that old monotonous world as a different person. I wonder, in this new year, has God started you down a new path? Are you following his pathway for your life? And what is God's pathway for our life? God captivated them. They stopped what they were doing. They focused on him. They got what he said down in their hearts, and it, it altered their behavior. The announcement under the stars on the hillside of Bethlehem left one band of shepherds forever changed. The question for us is, does God ever captivate your heart and mind? How soon do you forget the awesome wonder of communion? of forgiveness, of who Christ is? How long does it last? How soon do you forget what you read in the Bible? What can't you wait to do next? Think for a moment. If you're left alone for more than a few moments, what instantly draws you and captures your mind? Truths that you meditate on about an infinite, eternal God? Or dots? Or birds? or music, or videos, or pagan people that are licentious and godless, but are famous. You know, it's so interesting. When Bonnie and I travel the world, people, when they're alone, are either listening or watching. They're not talking, unless they're about 90. And they can't figure this out. All the rest, are either plugged to that or glued to that. Christians are glued, captivated to God. Be honest, this week, when you had 5, 10, 20 minutes to do anything that you wanted to do, what did you want to do? Did you want to take that moment and redeem the time and go toward God, toward his word, toward serving him, toward his presence, or not? 
this past week, were you often captivated by some clean secular music or some clean electronic games or some clean visual media online or a movie? And all those are neutral. Notice I said clean. Most of it's not. Most of it's sensual, demonic, murderous, evil. And that's definitely sinful. But if you just pick out the clean and they're, they're fine to spend time with, but God is more important. And humble people want to glorify him. And God is most glorified by our attention, our listening, our understanding, our responding. The humble people make time for God because he's more important than their pleasure, their their listening appetite, their entertainment appetite, their adventure appetite, their self-promotion appetite. He's more important. If you can't remember the last time you couldn't just pull yourself away from God, then it's time to repent. I wonder, in this new year, has God ever captivated you?